They say you'll change careers three to seven times during your lifetime. CNN, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, all agree that changing careers is the new norm. So whether you're just starting out, in the middle of your professional career, or somewhere in the middle, there's a career change waiting around the corner for you. Hi, my name is Mertis Smith, and I'm a high school engineering teacher. And today, I'm going to talk to you about my journey of change and share some advice to help you when, not if your time comes for a career change, but when your time comes for a career change. I started out as an engineering major, and somewhere around my third year in college, I decided engineering's too hard, and I want to do something else. I was going to become a teacher. I mean, after all, I was good in school, I loved math, and everybody loves teachers. Think about it. If someone were to ask you to name your favorite teacher, all of us could easily come up with two or three people that we remember and that we love. We love teachers. 20, 30, 40 years later, we still remember the lessons we learned in their classroom and how they made us feel. And I wanted to be a part of that. So my first piece of advice for you is to think about your legacy. How do you want to be remembered years from now? As we go through life making changes to our majors or changes to our jobs, a lot of times we feel like we're doing a connect the dots puzzle and we're hoping that it makes a picture. My challenge to you is to be deliberate. You are in control of that picture. Before I made the big jump into education, I paused and looked at starting salaries. Engineering's at the top. <laughs> of course it was, that's why I chose that major. <laughs> education was somewhere down at the bottom. And so I got my engineering degree. Life is a game of moves and counter moves. And my first career move was to follow the money. I took a position at a consulting firm, and I did pretty well. I got good evaluations. My first couple of years, I got a promotion. I got a nice raise. Life was good, but I was miserable. I didn't enjoy the work I was doing. I um, started having panic attacks at work, sweaty palms, heart racing. I wasn't happy. And so my second piece of advice for you is to listen to your gut. Your body is an amazing machine. It can regulate its own temperature. It can warn you about danger. It can fight off bacteria. And when you're not living in accordance with your values, the things that you say are important to you, your body will let you know about that as well. And that's what mine was doing. The opportunity came up for me to move into a position in human resources, and I jumped at it. I was so excited. I got to work with people one-on-one. -on -one. I got to do training. I got to help managers be better at their jobs so employees could be better. I was excited. Got another raise and another promotion. It was a great position. I loved it and then I got laid off. And that was not in the original plan. But I wasn't worried because I loved human resources so much that I had started doing some career, co um, career coaching on the side, just a few clients here and there. And I thought, no problem, I'm gonna become a full-time career coach. And I threw all my power and energy behind being a career coach. And what I learned is that while I was really good at being a career coach, I was really bad at running a business. Sales and marketing, they don't teach you that in engineering school, so that was not my forte. And so somewhere around the six-month period, the money ran out, and um, I had to get a job. So I found a position as a part-time math teacher, just a couple classes a day, and I liked it. At the end of that first year of school, my son was born, and I didn't want to go back to work full-time. So I found another part-time math teaching position, this time at a community college, just a couple classes a day, and I settled in there for about three years. When it came time for my son to go to elementary school, I decided I was ready to go back to work full-time, and I decided I'm gonna stick with teaching because it's been working well for me, so I'm gonna continue teaching. And the transition was easy. What I didn't realize at the time was there was a teacher shortage going on. Baby boomers were starting to retire. Education by its nature has a high attrition rate. And this problem, teaching colleges were reporting that fewer people were enrolling in teacher education programs. So my third piece of advice is to look for opportunities with long-term potential. 
See, what was a crisis for the field of education was an opportunity for me. The state of Ohio was so desperate for math and science teachers that they had a special um, licensure process for people from industry to come teach math and science at the schools. They had grants to pay for your classes. They had study groups to help you with the prep exams. And so the transition into teaching was very simple for me. So my advice as you manage your career change is look for fields that might have shortages or high needs because those fields are looking for people and they're doing things to help make the transition easier for people to come into those fields. So I got my own classroom, I'm teaching full time now, and the first thing I realized is everything they tell you about teaching is a lie. <laughs> you get summers off, teaching is easy, you only have to work from eight to three. None of that is true. I work every single summer. There is something I have to do for school. I have yet to go home at three o'clock. Then on the flip side are all the other bad myths they tell you. Teaching is horrible, it's a thankless job. Administrators and politicians are on your back. If you teach in a poor district, the kids are bad. If you teach in a rich district, the kids are brats. Well, none of that's true either. The truth obviously lies somewhere in the middle. And that brings me to my last piece of advice. Separate the myth from reality. We've all seen the memes. This is what people think I do. This is what I really do. <laughs> Invest some time in learning about the really do part. We're fortunate in teaching in that you are required to do student teaching before you get your license. So you can spend some time in the classroom. You can get to know other teachers before you commit to a class. You can recreate that opportunity in any field. Find a friend who works in the industry and go job shadow them for a day. Do some informational interviews. At one point in time, a few years ago, I thought I was gonna become a patent agent, because that sounded really good. But I didn't know any patent agents, so I went on LinkedIn, and I found a few. I sent them email messages, just asking them, what's it like, what do you do during the day, that type of thing, and everybody was nice enough to reply. And what I learned is I didn't want to be a patent agent. It didn't sound that interesting for me. But you can recreate that feeling, that learning about positions in any field that you're interested in just by seeking out and making inquiry. Constellations are our way of making sense of the random stars. And sometimes the changes that happen in our life feel pretty random. You spend all this time in college getting this degree and you get a job in that field and you hate it. You get a job that you actually do enjoy and you get laid off from it. You have a kid, and all of your priorities change. And it can all feel a little chaotic, a little random. What I've learned over the years is that by thinking about my legacy, listening to my gut, listening, looking for long-term opportunities, and learning to separate the myth from the reality, this journey of change can actually be somewhat enjoyable. And every once in a while, the universe will give you a message to let you know that you're on the right track. So I'd like to close by sharing with you my favorite teacher story. And this was my acknowledgement from the universe that all these changes had actually led me to the place where I was supposed to be. I had a student, an African-American female, and she didn't even want to be an engineer, but she liked my classes, which made me happy, so I had her for two or three years. She's in her 20s now, and we are Facebook friends. And for my birthday, she wrote on my wall, thank you for teaching me that it's okay to be beautiful and nerdy. Thank you.